and the cloud of Islam will carry you. In the last segment, the last quarter of the last verse of Surah Muhammad, Allah gives us a dire warning. Not your race, a terrible warning. Not your language, an awesome warning. Not your color. If you turn back from the duties and responsibilities which Allah has imposed upon you for giving you this high and noble status, He will substitute in your place another people and they won't be like you. You don't do your job, get out! قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما أوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن تتولوا يستبدل قوم غيره ثم لا يكون أمثال صدق الله Sadaqallahu al-Azim. My dear brethren, I read to you the last segment of the last ayah of Surah Muhammad. You know that there is a surah in the Quran and the name of the surah is Muhammad. Allah Ta'ala has named it in honor of the name of our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surah Muhammad. I don't know whether you know at home how easy or how difficult it is for you to find this. If somebody tells you that this is from Surah Muhammad, it is, I feel, a very important duty on our part that when anybody makes any references to the Holy Quran and gives you a reference, to go home and check it up. Not that you are doubting the speaker, that the man has some reason to bluff you. No. The very fact that if you take the trouble of checking up these references, you read the ayah with the translation and the commentary, it will help you in understanding what the learned man has already said. And by doing that, that part of knowledge will become your own property. But Muhammad, where will you find Surah Muhammad? In this particular one, at the back of it is a very comprehensive index. Just like a dictionary. You look for M. Muhammad starts with M. There's everything about Muhammad. Sir. Everything that the Quran speaks about our Nabi Karim is in there. Everything on your, on your fingertips. But we are looking for Surah Muhammad. The names of surahs are in italics, a special type of writing. So you read that, also under M, Muhammad will tell you chapter 47. 47 is easy to find. You know why? Because every page is numbered. 2, 3, 4, 5, 20, 30, 40, 47. Easy to find because every page is numbered. Once you found chapter 47, surah 47, then I tell you, is ayah number 38. Easy to find. Once you found the surah, ayah also easy to find. 38. The last segment, the last quarter of the last verse of Surah Muhammad, Allah gives us a dire warning, a terrible warning, an awesome warning. What does he say? He says, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْا يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمُ غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُمُوا أَمْثَلَكُمْ so you Muslims if you turn back from the duties and responsibilities which Allah has imposed upon you for being the khaira ummatin we believe that we are the khaira ummatin the best of people he describes us so he says kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat nas." that you are the best of people evolved for mankind not for yourself but for mankind the Arabs, not only for the Arabs, but for mankind. The Malays, not only for the Malays, but for mankind. 
اخرجت للناس تعمرون بالمعروف وتنحون عن المنكر what makes you the best of people because you are saudis you are pakistanis you are malaysians what this is no تعمرون بالمعروف وتنحون عن المنكر because you enjoy what is right and you forbid what is wrong these are your qualification but you know billah and you believe in allah if these are your qualities then you are the best of people not your race not your language not your color you stand for this ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah you are the best of people but if once you become the best people this status this position allah puts you in it also confers upon a certain responsibilities there is no honor without responsibility every position of honor carries with it certain responsibilities our imam he carries a greater responsibility than the muazzin you agree the person who just a sweeper who dusts the place he's got his responsibilities the principal of a school has his responsibilities the headmaster of the school has a responsibility the manager you are a manager you have certain responsibilities you are the ruler in the country you have your responsibilities in the house you have your responsibilities there is no position of honor without responsibility you can't get honor prestige status and you have nothing to do once you are khair ummah the best of people it carries that amount of responsibility so allah bari taala in this day and age he has chosen us and he's warning us that all muslims if you turn back from your duties and responsibilities which he has imposed upon you for giving you this high and noble status he will substitute in your place another people yastabdil qauman ghayra another people a foreign people thumma la yakun lahum salah and they won't be like you you don't carry out your responsibilities out you go the imam doesn't do his job what do you do get another imam the muazzin he doesn't make your fulfill what do you do we please him as your bosses you don't do your job what does he do to you fire him. the manager doesn't do his job he'll be fired this is the law irrevocable law is unchanging law you don't do your job out you go you being the khaira ummatin you don't do anything and Allah will keep you there on the pedestal because you are Malay you are a Pakistani you are an Arab no 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 nothing no favoritism with him he's got no favorites you don't do your job get out i'll put somebody else in your place you don't do your job get out i'll put somebody else in your place that's his law and this law is an eternal law unchanging law he's doing it all the time in the religious history of man in the first instance he chose the jews but he's right you know that he sent prophets after prophets to them out of the four heavenly books that we muslims we say we believe in we say we believe in the torah we believe in the zabur we believe in the injil and we believe in the furqan the furqan is the quran out of the four books Three of them, seventy-five percent of the books are Jewish books. You know that? Books given to Jews. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam is Jew. He was given the Torah. Hazrat Dawood alayhi salam is Jew. He was given the Zabur. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam is Jew. He was given the Injil. Jew, Jew, Jew. Out of the four books, three are Jewish books. Seventy-five percent Jewish books. We say we believe that they were sent by Allah. He chose them. He sent prophets after prophets to them. some of the names we give our children we say musa jewish name daud jewish name is ha jewish name yeah yeah jewish name you know that jews jews our children we give over them jewish names why because these are the names of the righteous servants of god we are not ashamed to give these names to our children but the fact remains that allah chose them he sends prophets after prophets to them to do a certain job of work they didn't do it they didn't fulfill their obligation 
So a Jew among the Jews, Hazrat Isa a.s., he is telling his people according to the so-called Injil, the New Testament of the Christians. Hazrat Isa a.s. is made to say, and the kingdom of God, this high position, this honor, this status, will be taken away from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. This position that you are holding will be taken away from you and given to somebody else. And who that somebody else will be? A nation that will produce fruits. You don't produce fruits, cut it off. Burn it. Trees that don't bear fruit, what do you do with the trees? Just an ornament, doing nothing, chop it off. Useless. Occupying valuable space. You too, you do the same, chop it off. Replace you. So Hazrat Isa a.s. told the Jews that you will be displaced by somebody else. And there is another law seems to be at work. That when he displaces one group of people by another, almost invariably that people who displaces you, who replaces you, is a nation, is a community that you have been looking down upon. That's Allah's punishment. The one you look down upon the most, he makes them to sit on your head. You're looking down upon the Bantus, then one day Allah will make them to sit on your head. You look down upon the Bushman, the hot and pot, you can make them to sit on your head. The people you are looking down upon, he will make them to sit on your head. Now you feel something. You still feel that we were the, 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 the master race, we are less than that. Down in the gutter you. You serve now. Yes, There is a law at work. Why won't you learn? Allah Ta'ala in his wisdom, he displaced the Jews. By who? By the Arabs. These Jews were looking down upon the Arabs for 3,000 years. They said, you see, Father Abraham, Ibrahim he had two wives, Sarah and Hajra. They say, the Jews, that Sarah was his legitimate wife. He entered into a contract with her. But Hagar, they say Hajra, was a bond woman, a slave woman. She was actually a princess of Egypt. The ruler of Egypt, he presented her to him. But the Jews, because of their hatred, they say she was a bond woman, a slave woman. As such, her children count for nothing. They call the Arabs Hagarines, children of Hagar, Hagarines. And the religion is Hagarism. This is the insulting way they speak about the Arabs, their cousins, and the religion, Hagarism. For 3,000 years. So they were looking down upon the Arab cousins, good for nothing. On the side of the Jews, the Arabs are good for nothing. Barbarians, illiterates, Ummi people. And Allah Barit Allah chooses them and makes them to sit on the heads of the Jews. But now once he puts you on the pedestal, he is not forever. You have to do the work, produce the fruits. You don't produce the fruits, he will substitute in your place another people. That's the law of Allah. Why don't people learn? That's the law. So the Muslims spread out. They went as far as Spain, as far as the Atlantic coast. They even conquered Spain. And they ruled that country for 800 years. Muslims ruled the European nation, Spain, for 800 years. No Christian nation has ever ruled Muslims for that period of time. Do you know that? The longest that they ever ruled was in Mozambique, the Portuguese. See, Mozambique is a Muslim territory. Even today, 60% of the people of Mozambique are Muslims. Yeah, next one to us. This place was an Arab outpost, trading post. And there was a governor there when the Portuguese came along and conquered them. There was a governor by the name of Musa bin Baik. Musa bin Baik was the governor of that territory. When the Portuguese with his superior gunpower, he came and knocked hells into them and conquered the place. Whose place? Musa bin Baik. They couldn't say Musa bin Baik, so they said Mozambique. That's how the name Mozambique comes about. The Muslims crossed the, the sea 
between Africa and Spain and landed at a place, Jabal. They called that mountain Jabal of Tariq. Tariq was the commander who crossed over from Africa to Spain and the place where they landed, they called that mount Jabal at Tariq. Now, the Westerners, they call it Gibraltar. Jabal at Tariq, they say Gibraltar. The Muslims went as far as the Philippines. They had the trading post there. Ma'amunullah. By the help of Allah, they reached there. Ma'amunullah. They say Manila. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. The longest that the Christians ever ruled Muslims was in Mozambique for 500 years. They ruled your motherland. Indonesia for 300 years, the Dutch. 300 years. Longest was in Mozambique. 500 years. The Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years. What were they doing? Muslims were having a jolly good time, Allah. As the African is having now, here, the white man, same thing, the Muslim was same position. In Spain for 800 years he had it. The Africana is here only for 300 years. He's having a good time. The halwa and the <laughs> nice, nice things here. He's having it only for 300 years. The Muslims have it for 800 years. And they're listening to the dire warnings of the Quran. Allah is warning them. He's warning us all, all times. The warnings are eternal. Say, Kam tarak wumin jannati mu'yun. Kam tarak wumin jannati mu'yun. وَزُوءٍ وَمَكَامٍ كَرِيمٍ وَنِعْمَةٍ كَانُوا فِيهَا فَاكِهِينَ كَذَلِكَ أَوْرَسْنَاهَا قَوْمًا آخَرِينَ فَمَا بَقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْزَرِينَ They read this. They read in the Salat, during the Quranic, the Rakats, in our Salat, they read. During the Taraweeh, they read. And they read the Tilawah in the homes, they read, these are Arabs. They understood what they were reading. It was the language. In our case, we have an, a lame excuse for saying, we don't understand. It's an excuse we have, but we don't understand what we read. Allah has given a warning, but this is like water on duck's back, because we didn't know what the warnings were about. So now, I want to put you in a dangerous situation. I said, look, get the translation. So you won't have any more excuses. That's why you are afraid. Don't buy. You are in deeper trouble. <laughs> yes. Now you will read. Allah is telling you this. Say, man. And if you don't heed the warning, double trouble. Rather be in single trouble. Just say, I didn't know. If you think you'll get away with that. The Arab is reading this in his own mother tongue. And Allah is warning him. So how many were the gardens and the fountains they left behind? And cornfields and monumental buildings. And wealth and the amenities of life in which they took so much delight. Kathalika. That's other people we made to inherit these things. فَمَا بَقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْزَرِينَ And neither the heavens nor the earth shed a tear for them, nor was respite given to them anymore. They read it. But when they read it, you know, they're thinking about the Egyptians. They're thinking about the Egyptians, the fool, the Firaun. You know, Allah, look at them. The garden they had and the fountain they had and the monumental building, the pyramids and the sphinx. Oh, what must they have? And confused everything they had, the riches, riches. One of the most richest civilized nations at the time of the time was Egypt. And the fool, he didn't heed the warning. Allah sends plague after plague, warnings after warnings. He didn't heed. Even till Allah destroyed him in the Red Sea. Drowned him and his hordes and his troops. He drowned him in the Red Sea. <laughs> you see that fool? He didn't learn. He didn't learn. See what Allah did to him? The fool doesn't know that he is in the firing line now. While he's reading, he is in the firing line. Because when you read this today, as soon as you read this, you think of Spain. Oh God. You know, if you ever go to Spain, if you ever visit that country, you see that the Alhambra, Cordova, 
all these beautiful cities that the Muslims left behind, buildings, beautiful buildings, and fountains in disuse. That's the only thing that there is that one can see in Spain. Besides the bullfights, if you're interested in bullfights, whether well, they can show bullfights, and the women, they, when they do the dancing, they have something on the fingers called castanets, they make kitty 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 kitty, you know, when they... <laughs> Besides that, there's nothing in Spain, except the buildings that our forefathers left. That's all that there is to see. But for 800 years, Allah gave them a mighty long inning to do the job. No, they won't do the job. You know why? Because proud, arrogant, said so these Spanish people, pig eaters, <laughs> what can they understand about Islam? Drunkards, drunkards. What can they understand about Islam? That's, that's the mentality. We have the same. You see, when I'm talking about something, think whether we are in the same, the same sickness we have, the sickness that they have. These colored people, what can they understand about Islam? Huh? You know the amount of alcoholics in South Africa, their alcoholic rate is five times that are, as of any other race in the country. <laughs> can they understand anything about Islam? At the slightest pretext, you know, they're ready to bash you. On one of my trips, I was in Elsie's River. I think Brother Muhammad, he had his supermarket there. And we just got the message that you know, the, electric, the power failed. So he wanted some cranking machines to work the tillers. So he said, come on, let's go. So we went. So he was giving the cranking machines, you know, to work the till because the power was not working. So I'm standing there looking, and I see an African there, and somehow I found seemed to be quite an intelligent African. So I'm, I'm telling him, I said, you know, these people here, I can't make out the difference whether these people are Muslim or not. There's no indication. So he tells me, he says, you know, sir, I lived here in Elsie's River before they pushed us out to Google it and what is Langa and whatever. Before they pushed us, we used to live among them. And I can tell you, pass, very easy to find. The difference is how. He said, you see, about three times, these coloreds, they bashed me up for no reason. Drink and this is a bash of kafir, a bloody kafir. These Malay people, they're very good people. You know, they don't do that. That's his way of identifying. The color and the Malay. Otherwise, we look the same. Am I right? Look, in your looks, there is no difference. Wallah, there is no difference. In your surname, there is no difference. In your language, there is no difference. The only thing that indicates that you are a Muslim is when I see the kufya on your head, I say, no, this guy is a Muslim. I said, how can I know? No. Mrs. Johnson visits me. Johnson. I said, are you Muslim? She says, yes. I said, what's your husband? He says, also Johnson. She is a Muslim. I said, yes. I said, where do you live? She said, on Johnson Road. <laughs> no, really, there's no. So my husband is a journalist. Johnson, I have to ask again and again. Muslim? Your husband Muslim? No indication. Mr. Hendricks. What's Hendricks? You have a Christian Hendricks or Muslim Hendricks? If I'm wrong, you must correct me. Muslim Brown? <laughs> Our party tonight is a Muslim Brown and we have a Christian Brown. Am I right? Look. That means this is what our slave martyrs gave our forefathers. We still carry those names.